Let's do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I went to Chipotle. Went to Chipotle. Got myself a chicken burrito. I went down the line, I got like all these ingredients, and then at the end of the line, the guy tried to wrap the burrito, but half of the shit inside the burrito spilled out, he still wrapped it. I was like, dude, you should have warned me. You're a burrito expert, you should have told me halfway through, hey man, you might be reaching maximum burrito capacity here. Do you think I want a messy burrito? No one wants a messy burrito. This is 27-year-old comedian Bo Burnham performing his song Can't Handle This as the big finale to his 2016 Netflix special Make Happy. Bo got his start in the comedy world during high school when he became one of the first big YouTube stars. Since then, he has produced four albums and three video specials, with Make Happy being his most recent and last for the time being. Bo prides himself on vulgar humor intertwined with an extreme sense of reality and existentialism. So how does Bo manage to make having a messy burrito relatable and funny? Let's find out. To start, Bo doesn't just jump right into this joke about Chipotle. Over the course of the hour, Bo prepares his audience and gains their trust using sarcastic honesty. That might sound like an oxymoron, but it will make sense soon enough. Two of the songs that Bo uses this sarcastic honesty in are Straight White Man and Kill Yourself. Guys, got a lot of problems in my life. I wrote a song about some of the problems in my life. Hopefully some of you can relate to it. Here we go. Straight White Man is the first song in the show, not counting the intro. Bo prefaces this song by explaining that he has problems and he hopes his audience can relate. If you take a look at the lyrics from the first verse, they seem like real problems, but then the joke appears and the problems become exaggerated and non-real. Walking around, I got no one to talk to. There's everyone, and then there's just me. If I could change, don't you think that I'd do it? God only knows why he cursed me to be a straight white man. In this song, Bo takes on another persona, an extreme version of himself that he uses to explain privilege. Bo doesn't like the fact that white, straight, male privilege exists, but is conflicted because he himself benefits from it. He has trouble being honest about this, so he results to sarcasm and comedy, much like a defense mechanism. Right away, Bo is telling his audience to not believe the words he is singing and to look beyond the surface for meaning. If a viewer took Bo's words literally, they would think being a straight white guy might be pretty tough. Luckily, the second he steps away from the piano and returns to center stage, Bo explains the joke. If you were offended by that, it was ironic. Isn't that fun? I meant the whole opposite of it. White guys, it's easy to be a white guy. He lets his audience know exactly what he meant. Bo will repeat this pattern two more times. I, uh... I don't love my fans. I have to be, I don't. The next song in this elaborate setup is Kill Yourself. Bo prefaces this song by talking about how he doesn't feel artists should be held responsible for solving the problems of their fans, and that fans shouldn't take everything their favorite artist says as law. Bo sees a problem in the performer-audience relationship, and he wants to make that obvious in a very bold way. Have you ever felt sad or lonely? Have you ever felt two feet tall? Have you ever thought, man, if only, how is anybody else at all? Just like in Straight White Man, Bo enters into the song with lyrics that could easily be taken seriously and could even be seen as inspirational. It's not enough and sticks and stones might break your bones, but words can break your heart. But if you don't know where to go, I'll show you where to start. Kill yourself. But once again, out of nowhere, Bo launches a huge joke into the song. The joke consists of sarcastic exaggerations. Seems familiar, right? I feel like you pulled back. For this song, however, Bo interjects in the middle of it to explain its meaning. One of the fact that I'm telling you to kill yourself over and over again. I'm just trying to make a simple point that these that life's Toughest problems don't have simple answers. Since it is such a serious and sensitive topic that Bo is singing about, he feels like he might lose the trust of the audience if it goes too far. It's a sensitive subject and you're probably just hearing me 
say that, and I've dealt with, I don't want to be in sent. Look, I sound unempathetic. I sound mean and rude. Suicide is an epidemic, and I don't want to be misconstrued. Explaining his empathy and his actual feelings about suicide and depression do a great job pulling the audience back into believing him. Need to book a therapy session, talk about your depression, and let a professional hear it. But if you search for moral wisdom in Katy Perry's lyrics, then kill yourself. It won't be painful if you are able to give a little kiss to an oncoming train. You'll kill yourself. Then, Bo does what he does best and shocks viewers with the same joke using even more extreme and comical ways to end your own life. Stick your tongue in a plug, suck a pipe of exhaust, make some toast in the tub, nail yourself to a cross, hold your breath till it's gone, drink a gallon of mace, be gay in Iran, let Oprah sit on your face, jump off of a bridge, skinny dip in a flood, skydive attached to a fridge, drink a Haitian guy's blood. Bring you to the zoo, give the tiger a shove, eat a Phillips head screw, marry Courtney Love. Now the audience knows what to expect when it comes to Bo trying to express his honest feelings about something. The next time Bo wants to talk about his problems or something serious, the audience will trust what he has to say and wait to hear his explanation before making any judgments. But I have problems. And maybe a crowd in New York would be nice enough to indulge me. So as we get to the end of a night of theater and comedy and sweaters coming on and off, I got one question for you. Bo introduces his final song, Can't Handle This, by restating that he has problems exactly like he did before Straight White Man. Can I say my shit? New York, can I say my shit? I got lots of shit to say. I got lots of shit to say. When Bo asks the audience if he can say his shit, they know to expect a joke, which is exactly what they get. I can't fit my hand inside a Pringle can. I have a huge amount of trouble fitting my hand inside of a Pringle can. I can't I've overdone the Pringles thing. Sorry. I want to have a daughter. Want to have a daughter. So I can finally have someone around the house who can fit their hands in a Pringle can. Yes, I'm still on the Pringle cans thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll move on, all right? But that is priority numero uno. After Bo spends an entire minute expressing his feelings about Pringle cans, he does his bait and switch again, talking about wanting a daughter, but then he immediately returns to his Pringle gag. This time is different for Bo. This one is harder to be serious about. He has to find more ways to hide his honesty, and sarcasm isn't going to be enough this time. He now needs a direct comparison. This brings us back to the idea of the messy burrito. Let's do this! I went at Chipotle, went at Chipotle. Got myself a chicken burrito. Looking back at Bo's previous methods, it is obvious that he is trying to say something deeper than his words will allow. But after the Pringles thing, the audience has already gone through a round of exaggeration. So how they will relate to what Bo is saying now is up in the air. You're a burrito expert. You should have told me halfway through. Hey man, you might be reaching maximum burrito capacity here. Do you think I want a messy burrito? No one wants a messy burrito. The whole appeal of a burrito is that all of the ingredients are contained within the confines of the tortilla. I wouldn't have gotten half this shit if I knew it was going to fit in the burrito, alright? Look! Bo saying, I wouldn't have gotten half this shit, is the first clue in cracking the burrito code. Referring to the ingredients as shit, directly relates to Bo asking if he can say his shit. This is his problem right here. And Bo isn't just talking about food. Something has become too large for him to handle. I wouldn't have got the lettuce if I knew I would have Wouldn't have got the cheese if I knew I would have Wouldn't have got the peppers if I knew they would have I wouldn't have got half of it like I'm okay with small mistakes. If you got no more chicken, I'll take pork. But I'll blow my dad before I eat a burrito. With a 
I just want to say that I love this image. I think it is so awesome, and seeing all the lights shining on Bo just sends shivers down my spine. Anyway, back to actual analysis. I think it's Tama, think it's Tama, that we break it down. Now Bo finally manages to execute the second part of his exaggerate, then explain routine. This time, Bo has built enough trust with his audience to be entirely honest, which is so necessary because it turns out that the audience is his biggest problem. I'll let him explain. I can sit here and pretend like my biggest problems are Pringle cans and burritos. The truth is my biggest problems, you. I want to please you, but I want to stay true to myself. I want to give you the night out that you deserve. But I want to say what I think, and not care what you think about it. Bo's issues all along have been with fame and responsibility. He doesn't know why all these people paid money to come see him perform for an hour, but he is so grateful to them, yet part of him still feels suffocated. Bo wants to say what he wants, how he feels, but he feels that no one would truly relate to him, and that nobody would believe him. He doesn't want all these people to rely on him, because he can't rely on himself, and it confuses him to the point where he just can't handle it. I don't get handled. What Bo is trying to give the audience that he cannot give himself is happiness. It's right in the title of the show. Bo is masking his honesty with comedy in an attempt to let people enjoy his music and laugh, and it is hurting him. By prioritizing making his audience happy, Bo is taking happiness away from himself. Bo saying that he should just shut up and do his job is such a powerful and sad moment. It is no mistake that not being able to handle this and not getting the lettuce because it doesn't fit have the same beat. Bo is showing the audience his mask and saying, I'll keep making you happy, but you're hurting me. This is my favorite part of the whole show right here. Bo is telling his audience, hey, if you didn't listen before, you better now, because I'm going to be real, and that's how I'm going to finish this performance. And if they still don't understand you, then you will run it one more time. They got on your head all this run. The glowing golden light transitioning into all the flashing moving spotlights creates such a rush of adrenaline and excitement that I, as a viewer, was left breathless with my jaw unhinged as I watched this for the first time. Good night. I hope you're happy. The final line, I hope you're happy, along with a mic drop, is the perfect way for Bo to conclude his message. He genuinely hopes his audience enjoy their time, and he also means it brutally, as in I hope you're happy that you did this to me, that my burrito is so messy. 